Um, my name is Kaya Stewart. I'm a singer songwriter living in Los Angeles, California. During the time of uh, filming this right now, Halloween's going to be literally around the corner. Yeah. I am curious to know, what are your plans for Halloween? I don't have any crazy plans. Right after this, me and my best friend are throwing like a creepy little Halloween party. So I'm going to go set that up with her. But that's kind of it. I'm, I don't have that many Halloween plans. Usually I do. I'm a big Halloween person. Yeah. What's the, uh, the craziest one you've done so far? Um... God, I'd have to think. I think my costume this year might be my, I think my favorite one. I'm doing Marilyn Monroe. I mm -hmm. hair off and I was like, this is the only time I feel like I'm going to have this haircut. So I've got to take advantage of it. So I wouldn't say it was crazy, but it's definitely my favorite costume. Oh, I love it. I love a good Marilyn representation. Good. I'm glad. Hopefully I can pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for Halloween to happen, um, in the meantime, you have an album that's been out for a while. Oh my goodness. How does it feel having this album out? Because it's been a couple of years since your last yeah. album. It feels it feels so good. I think I was saying this earlier. Um, it's so nice to have an album that wasn't planned. Like I feel like most albums in the past, I really sat down and was like, okay, I'm going to make an album. This is, you know, like I'm really putting my mind to it. And I've set a schedule and all of that. This was we made the album during the pandemic and it just kind of happened. So it's been really awesome to see all the amazing things coming out of it and something that I didn't even know was going to, I was going to do. So it's been really cool. So with this being like just a out of the blue, like, here you go, here's my album. Um, I'm curious to know in terms of how did you come up with the title? Cause it's, it's a lovely title. Thank you. Album. Um, It was a song I wrote on the album. I felt like it was the song that, spoke the most to the record it's called if things go south and at the time in my life it really was a time where everything felt like it was going wrong everything was worst case scenario that's what it really felt like and that song is kind of about pulling myself out of that and I feel like it really spoke to all the songs on the album and they all kind of connected wow I'm one thing I really loved about this album in comparison to your previous album is it feels very raw um it, it's there's no crazy effects it just feels like true and I guess I know the, the term now is Americana um it feels so naturally like southern but not uh not southern at the same time I want I'm curious how you went into this album like writing style wise um I think I made so I made the album in Nashville I write a lot in Nashville and I think okay. definitely being there brought out some influence of what you're hearing of that kind of Americana kind of country sound but like I said I mean nothing was planned we I really all the songs started with you know playing it on guitar or piano and then kind of just singing a melody and putting it together and I think that's where it sounds so raw and so honest is it really was just three of us in a room making music on real instruments and that it was really cool to make. Wow. So with the three of you uh, working on this during the pandemic, while everything, uh, everything's going on, um, I'm curious to know, uh, was there any other outside influences that helped inspire this album? Um, I mean, I'm always listening to music. I'm a music lover before I'm a music maker. And I think that I was listening to a lot at that time of like powerful women. And that was something that really spoke to me and like artists like Alanis Morissette or Debbie Harry. And I was strong women, like strong front women and talking about how they feel. And I was, I was mentioning this to someone else the other day. I was saying how it's crazy how when I first listened to Alanis Morissette, I was like, I can't believe she's saying this stuff in a song. Cause I feel the same way, but I feel like no one else is saying it. And I felt like there wasn't a voice yet for that that I'd heard recently where it was like, wow, you're saying exactly how I feel. That's exactly what I can connect to. And that's been the best part about putting this album out is getting that feedback and pe people really relating to it. Yeah. I have the chance to be able to listen to, well, of course, I had a couple of weeks of, uh, to listen to this and be able to enjoy it and kind of like vibe to it. Uh, weirdly enough, one of my favorite songs is um, Honey and actually cross it out. I've been on Honey and Independence was a tie with Independence being like a little bit more of a front runner. So I'm yeah. curious uh, in terms of um, of how uh, Honey came to be. I'm, I'm, that was the one that was more, um, I guess you say, like, more attention grabbing than I've noticed out of the whole album. Yeah. Um, Honey was, so I love rock music. I've always 
been a lover of rock music and I really wanted a song that I could use as a live performer to really get a crowd going. And it was, that was the song I felt like was missing when I was making the record. And it was so fun to make and so easy. And it was just like a really fun experience. And I feel like on stage now, that's everyone's favorite song because it's so upbeat and energetic and it's really fun. So you've been on uh, on stage for a few times so far since this album comes out. Besides Honey, um, what's been the, 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 the best one for the craziest reactions? I think if things go south, probably because it starts out as such a almost quiet and you think it's going to be kind of like a ballad. And by the end of it, it builds into this whole thing. And it, it's been the coolest one live because I feel like it really shocks people when you get to that part of the song. <laughs> um, so you filmed, uh, so you did the recording in Nashville. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, was there any like fun random things that happened while you were doing the recording? Yeah, so actually one of the coolest things ever is because like everything was kind of remote and we were doing everything through like, uh, well, it was three of us in the studio and then anyone else that we outsourced, I mean, it was peak COVID. So we were not, you know, we, we weren't really like bringing people into the studio and there uh, during, if things go south, there's a trumpet. Oh no, it's in Young in New York. There's a trumpet solo. And I really wanted a live trumpet solo. And I had gone back to LA at that point and we ended up doing like a Zoom trumpet session like for, which was weird because I've never done that before, but he would play yeah. the parts and I would kind of be like, yeah, like do it like that or change it like this, but it was all over Zoom. So it was kind of weird, but it was pretty funny at the same time. I was like, I never thought in a million years that I would be doing this right now, but I mean, it turned out great. It was perfect, but it was definitely weird. So I'm I'm hoping that you guys didn't use the the Zoom recording of oh, the trumpet. That, that's an issue too. I mean, it was so... Cause there's also like a little delay on zoom. So yeah. like what I was hearing was like a second after what he was actually playing. It was like a nightmare, but once we put it together, it was pretty easy. <laughs> that's a fun, that's actually a really cool way of being able to like work within the parameters of distance. Yeah. Um, so when it came to uh, like creating the music video, I, uh, how much fun was that to do? for uh, if things goes out? It was probably one of the funnest things I've ever done. It was also one of the hardest things I've ever done. We shot, really? the, whole, we shot the whole film in two days, um, 10 music videos that are all correlated. And we ended up shooting in like a small town in California called Santa Paula. And we shot from, what was, I think it was seven in the morning till 10 p.m. every single day. Um, it was such an amazing team of people though. And Paul Boyd, who directed it, totally understood my vision. We've been working together for months just trying to put this together. To So to see it come to life has been incredible, but it was definitely not easy. <laughs> oh my gosh, so you basically pulled a whole Taylor Swift over here. I did. Wow. That, to do that many music videos all together in that short amount of time, that's insane. Like, I'm curious, did you get any sleep? None. And actually, it's kind of a funny story. So the hotel that we were staying in, in Santa Paula, apparently was haunted. And I'm like a very superstitious person. And it really, really freaked me out. So I tried to sleep there the first night and ended up driving back to LA at two in the morning and then driving back at 6am. And from then on, I was like, I, I'm just going to do the drive there and back because I don't want to get possessed while I'm filming this video so I, I really didn't sleep at all I was driving every day but. oh my goodness so then did you not ex uh, did you experience anything while you were there okay so what had happened was is um one of my best friends Tyler was staying with me and she's my in photographer too she's incredible and we were sleeping and I had heard that this hotel was haunted and I looked over, it was like one in the morning and there was a little spider crawling on our bed. And I had decided that that was my signal that I needed to get the fuck out of there. And I got in my car and was like, there's no way I'm staying here. And I drove back every single day. <laughs> Honestly, a little dramatic looking back, but at the time it seemed very valid. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. That spider could have been easily planted there by a little ghost named Timmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that's where my brain was at. So I was like, there's no way I'm doing this. <laughs> but no one else on the crew uh, experienced anything? 
Not that I know of. I mean, I think, I, I mean, it was definitely haunted, the hotel, but I don't think anyone on the crew was as dramatic about it as I was. I was very dramatic. I was like, there's no way that I'm doing this. Well, you know what? Now that we made this a Halloween episode all together. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I, like, this is perfect content for Halloween. Perfect. I know. I wasn't exactly planning for Halloween, but now it's going to happen that way. <laughs> You know what? So uh, normally, what I do with my interviews at towards this point apart, I have a couple conversation parts. Yeah, are fun random ones. Um, let's do it. All right, so let's start with um, what is a dream you've let go of? I hope I said that right. What's a dream I had? What? What's a dream you've let go of? A dream I've let go of. Um, actually, I really wanted to go to culinary school. And I love to cook. It's like my favorite thing. I think cooking and music are like the perfect combination. Um, I really wanted to go to culinary school and I kind of had to pick and focus really my attention and what I wanted to do on one thing. And I chose music, obviously. But if I wasn't doing music, I probably would have gone to culinary school. Ooh. So would you have gone in terms of um, the dessert category or would you do more towards food? um I'm a baker I'm really into baking all right so I probably would have gone and opened a bakery if I wasn't doing this <laughs> honestly I would be doing somewhat similar to that because I wanted to go into a culinary as well yeah at one it, point I feel like with creative people I mean I don't think I would ever do anything that wasn't creative but I feel like I, I know a lot of at least a lot of my friends who are musicians also really love to cook it's like a weird thing that I guess goes hand in hand What's the most embarrassing thing you ever Googled? That I've ever Googled? Yeah. Oh, this must be a tough one. Um, I had a meeting with someone the other day that I guess I was supposed to know who he was. I mean, this is not that embarrassing, but it was pretty bad. I mean, I had a meeting with someone and I completely forgot their name. So at the table, I was literally online Googling who they were <laughs> so I could remember <laughs> name I'm one of those people where like if you tell me your name it literally goes in, in one ear and out the other and I I remember him telling me his name and then we're having this meeting and I in my head I was like oh my god I do not remember his name at all and I really hope this doesn't come up in conversation so I was kind of under the table googling where he worked and trying to figure out what his name was you no know, weirdly um, enough I don't think I've ever introduced myself <laughs> yeah no I know I'm like this is we didn't even fully introduce ourselves <laughs> to each other but no it's, exactly now I know exactly what <laughs> Oh no, it's, it's not just well. It was horrible. It was awful. And I felt so bad about it while I was doing it. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're now towards like halfway towards the end of the interview. Hi, my name is Taylor. <laughs> okay. Hi, Taylor. I'm Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm glad you're like mentioned. I was like, oh shit. I don't think I've ever introduced myself. <laughs> I know it's okay. I do. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. And I mean, it was, it was the most awkward thing because I was the whole time we were having this meeting I was like oh my god if he asked me his name if it comes up in conversation like I'm going to be mortified if I've been sitting here for 30 minutes and I don't even know what his name is so that's probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever googled let's go with um if you were to press shuffle on your music library right now what would be the first song that would pop up um probably Lauren Hill I'm a big Lauren Hill fan mm -hmm. I listen to her almost every single day and I think I, I think every, almost every single year my Spotify wrapped is like number one is Lauren Hill. So I, I would assume that's what it would be. Ooh. So for this year too? Or do you um, think yeah, I think for this year too. I've been, I listened to a lot of Chris Stapleton recently. So probably that also, but a wide range. I listen to everything. <laughs> well, I'm, I don't know. Have you ever seen the uh, like Tumblr memes or uh, TikTok memes of people who have like the, fan as their like spotify rap list is like the number one sound or number one song for them is just a fan blowing oh yeah oh no that's see that would make sense for me i'm also like i feel like mine would be like i put on a lot of like podcasts while i like i probably listen okay. to more podcasts than i do anything so maybe mine would be like a podcast or something if that even works then mine would probably be a podcast i think it would work too um what kind of podcasts do you listen to I'm a, I'm a true crime person. I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, which honestly, I have very thin walls in my apartment building. And I'm convinced that my neighbors think I'm crazy because I like always have one on like in the background while I'm like doing a million things. And I, it's probably not a good look, yeah. <laughs> but um, that's probably my number one. 
So what's been your favorite uh, case to listen to? Um, I'm really into this podcast called My Favorite Murder. All my friends listen to it. We're like obsessed with it. And they they kind of cover everything. Sometimes a little graphic. I gotta like sometimes I gotta skip because I'm like okay this is too much for me and uh that's probably my like background podcast like I listen to that podcast all the time so that's probably my favorite one so I'm curious would that be your go-to when you're cooking yeah I'm definitely <laughs> mine is either like R&B music or like a crime podcast <laughs> it's one or the other like really drastic different ends of the spectrum <laughs> love that oh my gosh I don't gosh uh usually when I'm like cooking it's either I'll have a like a true crime podcast going on or it would be uh the Selena and Shep show oh I love that yeah that's really good too because in that way I can be like all right yeah she's cooking I'm cooking she's cooking something much better than I am but (laughs) no I agree with you I used to put on food wet network when I was cooking and I had to stop because they just their food looked way better than mine yes and I didn't want to eat it what would put you in a really good mood immediately you were having a really I would say go to a concert really that's like I love going to or playing a show I mean if I know that I'm playing a show like I I get so excited and it's my favorite feeling ever so probably going to a show to see someone else or playing a show honestly I would definitely agree with you (laughs) yeah it's like the best feeling ever I I said that to someone the other day I was like going to see a concert or playing a concert I don't think anything like tops that honestly same like during the whole pandemic there was no shows there was nothing and it was just like once you realize that there's no no form of entertainment you realize how much you missed it I absolutely I, I I honestly was that was so hard for me was just being able to like connect with my fans or connect with up to someone I'm a fan of like that's the best feeling ever and so it was it was weird yeah my goodness well now that it's over and now that you are oh, you have a new album out which is everywhere um where else can we find you um I'm all over Instagram and TikTok you can hear my music on Spotify iTunes YouTube all of the above all right okay and with that being said I'm gonna stop the podcast recording here Thank you.